Okay, good morning. Uh, we're here at Pranadewi, the Samdana Retreat Center in the village of Wangaya Gede in Bali. And outside our house, we're at a meeting uh, of the FGG, which is a um, fair, green, and global alliance that Samdana is part of. So we're taking advantage of this to interview Martua as part of the Samdana Fellows interview series. So Bartu and I are here with uh, coffee from the Kabun, just across the river, roasted and uh, cupped here at Pranadewi. So we're, and we'll also be hearing a chainsaw in a minute. I have no doubt we've heard him already starting to work in the Kabun. He's not destroying rainforest. He's pulling down or she's pulling down some uh, albizia trees or maybe single. So, uh, cheers. Welcome, Mark. Thank you. So, Marto and I have known each other for a long time. And, um, and I should probably begin by saying I'm Chip Fay with the Samdana Institute. And I, having worked with Martua for 10 years uh, in the World Agroforestry Center. So, and after that and since that, before that and since that. So, Martua is uh, a, kind of a leading thinker in social forestry, indigenous rights, uh, land management policy, particularly law and policy, and uh, did a PhD in the Netherlands uh, on, on community-based natural resource management forestry uh, a few years ago. And Martua's parents are still alive and well, and his mom's from Germany, his dad's from North Sumatra. He's a prominent politician, uh, and he's got two brothers and a sister, also artists and remarkable people. Martu is married to Sandra Moniaga, one of Indonesia's great activists and human rights specialists and former commissioner of the National Commission on Human Rights and also a Samdana Fellow. Mar, I, I, if we, I remember correctly, you were a founding fellow and soon thereafter of Samdana, uh, which started now going over 20 years. So that's to get through a bit of Martua's background. Uh, so the point of these interviews is to have a chance to tell your story and things that are not necessarily work related, but in terms of who you are and what your life is. And we've known each other a long time, so I, I anticipate uh, being able to stay quiet and ask relevant questions at the right moment, but it's really a chance for you to to share what you've done, what you think, and where you want to be putting your energy today. I should have mentioned Matt is the deputy director of the Sandani Institute here in Indonesia. Um, so, yep, Matt, silakan mulai dari di mana aja. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, as good friends and uh, also colleague, uh, former colleague in ICRAP, I learned a lot uh, uh, from Chip, actually, on policy work, policy work related to land and resource tenure. And we, um, as me, not trained as a lawyer for this issue, but as a forester, learning more on the policy aspect and has uh, experiencing a lot of uh, related problems on the uh, tenure insecurity by the IP Indian people and local community bring us together to work really seriously on see the policy opportunity and also uh, grow from there on provide several recommendation on the tenure aspect in Indonesia especially learning from the horizon in other country and I think that is a very uh, important thing bring it the experience from the field together and see the policy opportunity and work further to think about policy reform. And that is, I think, my background. And uh, as a deputy executive director for Samdana, who are also responsible for administrative work, it's now combining the work of administrative work also uh, policy and also bring our lesson from the institution to the broader uh, viewer and i hope this is also one of that opportunity to bring our experience to the wider audience 
Thanks. Okay. And how, Mar, did you first get interested in this? I mean, I, I know you grew up in Bandung. Uh, you wound up doing your forestry education in East Kalimantan, Muluwarman. Uh, so what led you to this work early on when you were younger? Yeah, maybe forestry's family, family who are open-minded about uh, the situation. Uh, we are grow up in Bandung, but uh, further Bandung as a city where a lot of uh, young uh, uh, goes for hiking. So this bring me to the hiking club. I uh, joined the Taruna Hiking Club, which is last year celebrating the 50th year. So among the oldest hiking club uh, in, at the senior junior high school. So that bring me more uh, exposed to the nature uh, and also to see the world beyond what is there in Bandung, but to see it more broader and bring me to the study to the forestry school in uh, Mulawarman University. And of course, with the uh, experience during the uh, student time, active again in the uh, hiking club and nature lover, we call it in Indonesian language bring me further to the uh, exposed to the real world, what's going on with the IP, land grabbing, and justice happen, and also move further to the NGO life of the student life NGO, uh, who exposed to the real situation, and start thinking about, we need to use our knowledge for advocacy, doing community mapping, uh, and uh, support the community to do their own mapping about their territories. I remember at the time Nancy Peluso, a, pro a famous professor, mentioned about counter mapping housewife worry. Whoa, is this a counter the movement of the state? But I think that's reflect what the situation at the time. Good, I remember that too. I remember Sandra Moriaga not being happy with that paper that Nancy did either. But uh it was a dynamic time. I thought the analysis around the mapping from the academics was important and helpful. But let's go back a bit, because I can imagine you, Martua Sirai, in the 1970s, being part of a hiking club in Bandung, getting up early before the sun comes up. And what's magic about Bandung is you could be out in the hills hiking before the sun really hits, because it's coming up over the mountains to the east. And so you'd get up into the higher areas and just watch all of Bandung be filled with early morning sunrise light. Uh, and what what was Bandung like back then? Yeah, a little bit correction, not 1970s, <coughs> not that old, 1980s. Okay. Right, uh, 1981. I just finished my uh, junior high school and I joined the Taruna Hiking Club this and uh, bring me more on the expose to the, to the Bandung situation. Bandung is a, a valley, uh, is a cup, like a cup surrounded by mountain where we have a lot of opportunity to go around, around the, the Bandung to see the beauty and also experiencing environmental problem. We can see the haze, not at that time, but uh, at the situation now, housing problem, flood, uh, flood in the in the lower part of Bandung, we can have that a lot of experience about that, and that is also the beauty of Bandung. And we are also surrounded by mountain that sometimes erupted, and we can see it nicely from one of the pit to see the other side when the uh, mountain erupted. And it's beauty, but we know there is really uh, people suffer from that. But also, if there's a beauty that the land is fertile for the uh, surrounding Bandung with the fertile land. Yes, and it's, it's not uncommon for activists of your generation to have begun with the nature clubs. I mean, you think of Watala and, and Lampung as being one of many examples. Uh, whereas in the Philippines, most of the NGO activists began with the student movement around uh, opposing the dictatorship of the Marcos era. Uh, and I know Sandra also did a lot of outdoor 
work. So it's, it's a common theme among, and I hope it's still the case with this new generation. So tell us about your dad a bit, your father having uh, been a, a remarkable presence in political Indonesia, voice of conscience and, and authority, uh, and how he, he, both your parents influenced your, your pathway. Yeah, my parents actually it's started not as a politician. He is an academic who are really uh, doing uh, as an academic and as a lecturer, uh, lecturing on the uh, electrotechnic, very scientific, uh, not the political science. Uh, but he's an open mind person. He learned and also he experiencing uh, struggle when our ancestor land in in North Sumatra were taken over by uh, timber plantation and also the factory that create uh, pulp and paper a company that create uh, pollution and big problem for the health and also the environment of North Sumatra. So my father engaged in that movement where also my grandfather is already part of it. Uh, but uh, that bring him more and more to the to the movement, uh, and then when he become the rector of the University of Christian Indonesia in Bandung in Jakarta, is more exposure to the student movement. Student movement close to the uh, 1998 reform, and he decided that he joined the movement. We open up the campus for the student movement for the Secretariat of uh, Forkot. Forkot is the strongest uh, student movement at the time in Jakarta, where accommodate the student uh, to become the campus as a secretariat. And this is also something that we as a son and daughter with Sandra also discuss and convince our parents that the uh, the reform cannot stop. This should be continued. This is unstoppable, and we need to have a reform, political reform, with a more democratic and leave the authoritarian state. So that uh, bring my father to the more politic, and then later form a political party and become a legislative member for one term. But after one term, he said, "Okay." The reform is done. We did our job. Let's uh, return back to the campus. So he dissolved the party and then returned back to the campus and also helped the uh, lawmaking process at the uh, legislative member as an expert to the uh, legislative for uh, issue on energy and uh, environment aspect. So he also moved from more technical uh, electrotechnic to towards uh, more deep on the environmental issue. So an electrotechnic issue, <clears throat> the um, process and procedures around electoral procedures? Electrotechnic, uh, perhaps you could explain. Yeah, like, uh, he has a dream to have a, a more sustainable energy by doing research on the thunder and the lightning okay. energy. So his dream is to capture the uh, lightning for uh, electricity. So oh, a lot of his research is around this area. By the student, he is known as Gundala Putra Petir. <laughs> this is an Indonesian uh, comic or a story about Gundala is the son of the lightning. Okay. So he did a lot of research uh, during his time uh, with a lot of researcher from uh, Japan on how to capture the uh, lightning. But started with how to measure how big is the uh, uh, lightning energy. Okay, good. That's clarified. So let's run back to the 1998, that... Uh, Remarkable time with the, f the quick downfall of, of Suharto and, um, and the, the, your 
father and the students were uh, in the center of that, in, in the middle of Jakarta during the riots and the chaos that transpired over those five days. Uh, so your father and you and were all in the middle of that at the time, it sounds like. Yeah, something like that together, of course, with other students, yeah. uh, person, business people, and also professionals. Yeah. That is important where the professionals also uh, show their uh, right and show their way, show their position about the uh, crucial situation in Malaysia at the time. And you succeeded. Yeah, succeeded, but uh, of course we have still a lot of homework, and also we are worried that the dictatorship will return. Yes, uh, and uh, then followed that remarkable period of reformasi, where it felt like anything was possible. I, I, I was I was here with you at that time, but let's let's move to your mother. Tell tell us about your mom. Yeah, my mom uh, is a German. Uh, Later, I will talk about further, but uh, in short, she's raised in Brownswijk, where I was also born in Brownswijk, where uh, my mom met my father as an Indonesian student at the time, uh, and they fall in love. And what is important before the marriage, my mom changed her nationality to become Indonesian. So I was born by in German by Indonesian mom and Indonesian father. So I will not consider as mixed couple in Indonesian law okay. or a half Indonesian. I'm um, uh, born as Indonesian, uh, born by, uh, from both Indonesian parents. And that's how my, my mother, my mother is, uh, my grandfather is a, uh, uh, Protestant uh, pastor uh, from the Lutheran Church, so you could imagine how the Batak, my father is also a uh, Lutheran, uh, Protestant Lutheran, and they met at the church in the classical way of story. So did you grow up being active in the church? Uh, both my parents are active in Okun medical uh, movement, where they see and the, the, there is no difference between the uh, religion and they also become very uh, open about uh, marriage between uh, religion and marriage uh, um, uh, uh, within a different ethnic group and etc. So they grow in that. that uh, so now we can call it non-discrimination, uh, non-discrimination uh, uh, environment. And yourself? How about your participation in, in the church and your spiritual foundations? Uh, my parents are open, so that makes me also open to choose. They never force me, me to go to, to the church. You want to go, you go. If you want to know, you want to sleep, uh, it's okay. So I was raised in that uh, situation, and also that's I also bring it to my uh, son and daughter. They can choose what type of day. I think it's good for them. Good. Well, then we move into uh, your time in university in East Kalimantan, which would have been in the eighties. Yeah. And uh, East Kalimantan was the front line of all the forest destruction at that time. You had Bob Hassan and and uh, and all of the pulp, uh, plywood mills that were coming out of his uh, supply chain, all sorts of beginning of conservation awareness among the various Dayak communities. Uh, and, and you wind up in, uh, in Samarinda. So t tell us how, uh, and, and then subsequently all of the connections and the people that you're still friends with, how you all met during that time. Yeah, I, uh, I finished my high school in 1985, quite late. I was already 20 at the time. So uh, it means uh, uh, I tried to catch um, the, the, the steps uh, in Samarinda. I study and uh, I choose Mula Warman University, Faculty of Law, the Faculty of Forestry, 
uh, by choosing it on the paper. Never been there, but I have the dream to go to Kalimantan. So that bring me there, and of course in Samarinda, quite active in the uh, nature lover, pencinta alam, our uh, own now. The pencinta, the nature life lover uh, is 40 years old. We celebrate this year 40 years of that. And they're still active. That's what we mentioned also before. Is it still? Yes. Every year we have the uh, training for the youth, the uh, new counter, new counter. And then now it's already uh, the 38th uh, batch from uh, oh, incredible the time. So I was entering in the middle of this and really active. And most of us at the time, we also active from there. After we are active this, we move to the NGO sector during the the, uh, the student time with Long Denang Ginting, who is used to be the director of Balki, is uh, with Pantom, uh, um, with Pantom, with Bai, Bidin, there's a lot of Neil Ma- Neil Makinudin. yoga, <coughs> Neil Makinudin, who is in FPNC, Yekan now. So, a lot of uh, activists who are uh, growing at a time together in our uh, student time, we work continue until now with the issue of the uh, environmental justice with their own specifications. Some goes to the conservation issue, some really go to the to the energy sector, some goes to the uh, forestry issue, uh, and it's still uh, around that. And we still make friends until now, and this is the friendship that we develop. And this, this is an important part of the world for the Sandana community, at least in, in many of the activists you just described as having formative experiences in East Kalimantan. And when you look back, uh, how important Kayan Mantarang was, for example, WWF was starting that. I came to Indonesia as a Ford Foundation person, and the first thing I did was pretty much anything Sandra Moniaga told me to do. And, and then met Tim Jessup, met you, uh, then Ketot Dede was up there. You did the first community mapping in all of Indonesia, as far as I know. You pioneered with that team, uh, community mapping. Uh, was, then we connected, we helped Ford connect that to University of Hawaii. Uh, Frank Momberg was up there. Antonia was up there in Kaimantarang. And I'd visit a few times, but I never worked there. Uh, incredible time and period. And um, and then subsequently, uh, you came to uh, Jakarta and married, and we, you and I worked at ICRAF. But d- during that Kayam and Tadang time, uh, tell, tell me what you see today uh, as a result of all all that work and attention, and what, what you what do you know what's going on in the Upper Bahau and and then yeah. the Kayan River. Jump to that, that. I should also mention Lini Wallenberg and C4. Ah, Sorry, yeah. then C4 creates their, their research station up there. So it was quite a remarkable draw, that whole that whole forest area, which is now North Kalimantan. Yeah, yeah. So uh, my work in East Kalimantan, now East Kalimantan, used to be East Kalimantan, North Kalimantan, it's not jump right away there. We active on the advocacy of Bintian. Of course, uh, where the community leader, uh, uh, Dingit, Boy Lontor Dingit, received the uh, Goldman Award. Yeah. So that is actually our maybe real uh, struggle outside Samarinda. Usually it's around Samarinda and the mountain around Samarinda. But it's real uh, struggle. We work together as a student movement, as an NGO, together with the uh, English people and local community. Uh, and that brings me further to to Kayan Mentarang. Uh, good, I got the opportunity to join the WWF Kayan Mentarang, where Chip you supported a lot that uh, project at the time, and uh, it's a natural result. But the community there never know about uh, nature reserve. They didn't know about forest area. They didn't know conservation area. They know exactly, precisely about their uh, own 
way in managing the forest. The area is about a million hectares. It was 1.6 million. 1.6. So come to my mind also how to protect their their rights because they they didn't know anything. Top down policy coming and. We as a staff in the field is trapped in the middle. Whether we need to to uh, become a law enforcer or what should we do in this dilemma? So and then we choose. Let's make a community mapping. Uh, this uh, was quite a big uh, project at the time, uh, together with Lippy, uh, Harry. Uh, was also uh, there, um, and then uh, also Tim Jesup, uh, also uh, was there, and also the local uh, conservation office of the uh, East Kalimantan, Pak uh, Budiman Amin, also there. They are very cooperative and help us to learn and experiencing and provide the space to do community mapping. It's quite uh, new for people. I also learn, I know how to do mapping, but the community mapping is something new for them. And let's make it. And then we try to map uh, village by village, claim by claim uh, on the, of the village, the uh, ancestral land there, the migration pattern, and also how they use the land. I come more on the land use, uh, how to integrate the state land use that they wanted as a conservation and the community uh, land use system. And we also introduced to a lot of uh, indigenous uh, land use system of the uh, Daya Kenya there, which is reflect something. It helped me to unlearn my forestry school also about the, the conservation model that is introduced national park and etc with the local uh, wisdom and local management practice and let's make it put it on the map as a basis for the negotiation as a basis to talk about the difference uh, of their opinion and way in managing the forest so that's the start when we uh, do community mapping and met with a lot of uh, uh, new people, Kaput Dedi, who is also Samdana Fellow, who is a geographer, which helped us a lot on the new technology at the, at the time, GPS coming in, GIS, and all the more sophisticated, which could help us speed up the process. The initial GPS instruments weren't very precise. We'd have to put them on a bamboo or a stick and try to find a place in the forest where we get a signal. And that was uh, that was pre cell phones. Um, yeah, that that late eighties uh, yes. technology that is uh, or early nineties. Uh, and what that'd be early nineties. And what I should also say is Francis Seymour started that because I took over from Francis at Ford and culture and conservation with Alan Feinstein. And it was a great entry point for me, just learning Indonesian and going up there and hearing all these stories, incredible research, I mean, papers and papers and papers all about the diet and conservation. And, and you started with the policy work and the mapping. So a really important time. And so today, what do you see up there? When was the last time you- Well, I've never been, uh, I never returned there. Uh, after I left in 1994, I hope I can go there together with our old friends and see again the, the village. But I still met them in several of meetings, uh, visit to Malinau, and what they reported the situation is still more or less the same. The community is still as, uh, cohesive in managing their natural resources. And also they finished the maps of the whole 1.6 million hectare, village by village, claim by claim of their uh, uh, community, and also the land use plan inside this. Uh, this is a remarkable work. And also, uh, I should say uh, that the local government of Malino also recognized them 
in term of the local uh, regulation and also in the uh, decree. So it's now the way how they got the uh, national recognition of their indigenous forests. We are still waiting the process. They already uh, submit their uh, requirement application to the ministry and we hope soon they will get the, their time of security. It's important, especially uh, in the uh, situation where uh, the community manage the uh, national park. It's not a status of national park or the conservation area in their own way, uh, in their land, as also uh, stated in the uh, ambitious agenda 3030 of Montreal Kunming, that one of the scheme is conservation owned and managed by the community. Here is the indigenous people of Kaimantara. So it is a, I'd call it a success story, even though this tenure security hasn't been worked out, this, this security is strong because the communities have been strong. Uh, of, of course, not perfect. And the threats are being met, although they're formative, formidable. Uh, you've got the trans Kalimantan Highway, you've got a dam going in these areas, and there's oil palm that is creeping into the, the lower valleys, going up into the, the mountains and the watershed from, from east to west. So there's still some very serious problems. Uh, and is Samdana active up in North Kalimantan? Yeah, we are uh, supporting the community there through Sapra project, especially to uh, finalize the southern part of the national park at the time not yet finish the map, they finish it already, and also support the community, facilitate the community in their application to the ministry, to the local government first, they got the recognition, and to the uh, ministry of environment and forestry for their... Yes. Uh, and we're in touch with Warsi, to Warsi's active. And then uh, the organization there, yeah. they also uh, introduce other schemes uh, there. But uh, I believe... Other schemes know, meaning Hutan Desa. <laughs> Village I, forest agreements, which you, you tend not to agree with. There is always problem. There is always yeah. different opinion. But I believe on their own decision-making process under the FOMA. FOMA is the forum of the Indian people uh, oh. all around Kayan Mentara, which is quite strong. They, they also received in 2022, they received the Equatorial Award yes, I for this. effective uh, institution of the high P in Kayan Mentara who uh, actively engage and facilitate this process. Mostly they are uh, youth at the time, youth of the uh, IP in the area who were representing the IP leader who are in the villages on this type of policy process. They also have a clear role uh, in the past on their role in the um, management plan of this like the steering committee for the, for the National Park uh, Authority. But it needs to grow further. They also need, uh, we need also now the community-based conservation. So, uh, FOMA is the one in front in uh, discuss and engage with the government locally and nationally uh, on this issue. That's Led by also our friend, Dr. Uh, Dolphina Damus. Sure. Is also uh, my colleague, uh, my friend from the student time in Mulawarman University. She is from the Faculty of Agriculture, and she also joined Kayan Mentara, a project with WWF from early in the beginning. And she's and, in the legislature now? Yeah, now she's running also for the legislative member for her uh, third term. Third term. Yes, well, uh, the, the, that's an incredible story, that whole part of Borneo. Um, and Soon thereafter, you and I wound up at ICRAF. I was your boss. I, I wouldn't, I couldn't somehow, I can't remember. It's a, I didn't want really to be your boss. And then you finally had to insist, Chip, you're my boss. <laughs> Get used to it. Uh, 
And I said, okay, I'll get used to it. And then we had a remarkable 10 years of um, policy development with an incredible team with Gamal and Kusworo and Lisken and many others and all of our partnerships. And we had the team crew, we had that whole experience. We could do an entire podcast on that whole period. Uh, but we're moving towards a half an hour on this. And it's nice to try to keep these interviews to around 40 minutes. Uh, so we've, we've come to today. Uh, you're the deputy director of Samdana. Samdana has grown enormously to become a, a pivotal player in the region, particularly uh, Philippines, Indonesia. Uh, and uh, uh, speak to us a little bit about where you see Samdana going, but also where you see yourself going. What, what are the things that are important to you now and what you want to do uh, in, in, this year and into the future? So uh, don't hesitate to, to share your vision and dreams. Yeah, I think uh, after I returned from the Philippines for study my master. You ask, why don't you work to get, we to work together at ICRA? I was like, hmm, doing a research in a research institute. It's like uh, I'm not sure at the time, but you convinced me. And uh, more than ten years experience working together, making a lot of uh, policy analysis, policy challenge, and also policy breakthrough together makes me think. Yes, this is the one. Yeah. I like that the, the way we work and also with the network. So that's also bring me to Sambana. Become a fellow and continue uh, dedicated time, work full time in Sambana. And also to, to also uh, make more what we call it harvesting of the policy work, not only on paper, but on reality on the ground, through uh, support for the community, like through uh, policy support and also granting support from Sandana. Of course, there's another co important component, which is capacity uh, development that we also uh, support. And your fish and chip, when you develop uh, Sandana, and we discussed a lot in the beginning of this with Kusworo, with Gamal, with Nonet, of course. It's really uh, see that it's the time to really make materialize it and operationalize it on the ground. Maybe not at the time, maybe through research institute, more applied research, but it's still far from the reality. We need to uh, bring it to the more uh, ground level, experiencing, and bring the experience and lesson learned to the further discussion at the national level with Aman person with KPA, with Walhi to bring it to the national level with the for a more broader movement, and also our lot of friends entering after the reform become lecturer and bring, bring back to the campus through our friends who are actively at the university or at the uh, research institute or academy at the university. Yeah, and we did have a, wasn't a program particularly, but it was certainly an, an organized effort to go back to the campus. I, I remember there were methodologies, curricula, it was very cool. Uh, I do want to go jump back just to tell a couple of funny stories. Was uh, when I first met Maratu was at Sandra Moniaga's house. He was coming up the road and he's coming to have dinner. And we hadn't met yet. And Nonet is explaining this is very important, Chip. You've got to meet Maratu because Maratu and Sandra are, are friends and it's a sweet friendship. And I got the message. And that I can still see coming up outside the gate. I was, I kind of met you. And there was Maratu and his Maratu gate. I'm Maratua, and I'll, I'll never forget that moment. And then it proceeded, and you went off to Ateneo, and Nonette whispered to me, because I was at Ford then. She said, Chip, wouldn't it be an important thing that Sandra goes to work at LRC in the Philippines for like six months? I'll bet she'd be keen to do it. 
And I got the message too. And I said, I'll bet she'd be keen. I bet Martu would be keen she does that. And we did. Uh, Sandra was keen. She went off to No Nets, the founder, one of the founders of LRC, Friends of the Earth Philippines Legal Rights Natural Resource Center. And Sandra went there and, and had a really f wonderful six months, I can't remember. And of course, LRC is uh, just more or less across the street from Ateneo where you were studying. And it was total kepetulan. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was fun. So this is what, just me once again, just doing what people tell me to do. Uh, in that case, no net. And the other thing, of all the 10 years, the uh, work that we did, which did challenge the fundamental structures of state control over forest resources, uh, we, we did challenge the, the basic legal legitimacy of this, of this state defined forest zone, et cetera. And, but we did, we got along really well with the people at the, at, at Mangala and, and the Department of Forestry, particularly the minister at the time, John Malud. And so we, we were integrated well and we're inside actually helping write policy. I mentioned that today. And then you did tell me the story of later when you had already done your PhD and I was still orbiting around maybe as Klua, as a donor. People in Mangala, the old guard who'd been there a while said, Sirait Fei. You're good, but I was Bahia. <laughs> so I've never forgotten the Bahia. So I said, if there's one word that can sum up the work we did as a team with Mangala and, and Indonesia in general and challenging state control, it's we were Bahia. And I think we still are. Uh, Bahia is dangerous for uh, those who are not speaking Indonesian. So, uh, and I think we still are th thinking in terms of challenging. It's ch the dynamics have changed so much in terms of political space for certainly for a foreign foreigner but uh, it's still the same approach of just being patient and getting in from the inside and shaping the dialogue the conversation and the actual policy yeah i think that this is a real situation we got a lot of support from those in the forestry who are sympathy to to what we are doing because we are honest, we want to support the Indian people and local community in managing the forest. We are, uh, but we are challenging the very critical point of the uh, forestry is the boundary of the forest area, which some foresters doesn't want to go back to to challenges. But we are not only challenged; we provide the way how to deal with this yeah. and as a forester I also don't want to leave my uh, forester colleague, college alone in this situation you also chip as an activist you want to find a way we are in a position that we want to find a way to solve this problem because it's not only from the or the Baru time it's uh, from the colonial time we still don't have the answer yet so this and also not only Indonesia, other country also facing the same thing with the old uh, forestry school that they thought uh, at the school. This is a uh, post-colonial issue that we we yes. need to deal together. And when it comes to uh, the solution, let's find the solution on the way and the policy context in Indonesia. I'm very happy that uh, Apan took it further to the constitutional court with that analysis and they win the very two important cases. One is the MK certified that recognized the IP land, IP forest, not as uh, Indian people uh, forest, it's not the state forest, but it's uh, Indian people's land. And the other one is about the procedure to define state forests yeah. in the MK45, where really specify that this process should be done one by one. They cannot jump to provide license directly. They should finish it all the procedure that is there laid out in the law. Yeah, and I think it's fair to say that our research provided the foundations for a lot of that and our communication act activism work. We would use the tools of state power against state power. For example, 
when Perumperotani, the state forestry corporation in Java, claimed large areas of West Java. This was the case. And we went back, and their, their maps are based on the colonial maps. And we actually went back and found the colonial maps and said, here's the colonial map, here's your map, they, they, they're different. And the colonial map actually isn't stealing the Sunda land here. And so you're wrong. And they just look at it and just look bewildered, saying, you know, how can you argue against that? Uh, so it was, and these are still basic policy ag advocacy tech, techniques, strategies that, uh, are solid evidence based. You say that you, this is state forest land, please provide the evidence. And we know that the evidence, more often than not, they will not be able to provide the evidence. Uh, and that's until today. So, uh, this is a very basic issue that we open, open up in the micro level and that is very important and I was invited by the Commission of Anti-Corruption to deepen up this and provide recommendation to the state-owned company and we choose at the time the forestry, um, the Minister of Environment and Forestry the uh, Ministry of Spatial and uh, Agrarian uh, Ministry, the Commission of uh, Anti-Corruption, and also the uh, state-owned company uh, ministry, uh, ask us to do research, particular for Java, to deal with that issue. And this is like a micro issue of the whole, the bigger issue of Java. And we found out that there is a lot of uh, non-legitimate claim of the forest area and also uh, that is given to the uh, state-owned company to manage it. And good move is in the 2021, the area of the concession of the state-owned company cut uh, one third of them to solve this particular issue, to solve the boundary issue and ensure that the land which is, has no forest function will be go for the uh, agrarian reform and area which is still need and managed by uh, uh, for, need for managed in the forest area will be managed under uh, social forestry scheme and that's what we are witnessing now uh, progressing uh, more and more social forestry we are still waiting on the agrarian reform process to speed up to fulfill this uh, for the peasant, but for the social policy, it's we just returned from Garut, for example, uh, a few days ago with the team that uh, went together, and we see how the land is uh, managed under the community in the agroforest. Now they call it agroecology, mix uh, coffee and uh, fruit trees, and very productive. And the coffee that I drink is one of it, the coffee from the Abba Hasset, uh, the name of the, the grandfather who made that brand, who start uh, in Garut Patro, who are managing the, the land now under uh, social policy scheme, scheme 75 years. Mm -hmm. He is now in the age of 60, and he really worked with the uh, son and grandson uh, to develop the farm. So what you're talking about earlier is the the largest breakthrough in agrarian reform in Indonesia and Southeast Asia uh, for a long time and certainly the biggest in Indonesia. So it was a third of the state forestry corporation's holdings on the island of Java. Millions of people are involved uh, within these areas. And it was also a Sundana fellow, Don Fauzi Oji, who who, who facilitated and made this happen uh, by working on the inside of the State Forestry Corporation as a commissioner of the Gulf Board. <clears throat> and now the question is how it gets implemented. And it is important, to, this is not private rights recognition, it is still a community-based lease from the Department of Forestry as within the social forestry scheme, but provides a lot of security and the main thing is support for the agroecology systems. Uh, particularly in East Java. So it's a, a major breakthrough that didn't receive a whole lot of attention when it happened. It's, is it 5 million hectares? I, can, uh, I can't remember. 1.3 uh, 
1.2 million hectares, oh, okay. Okay. which is returned to the uh, Minister of Forestry for redistribute either social forestry, agrarian reform, but still they put also uh, the national strategic project. Good. Well, we'll we'll wrap the interview up, Martua. Um, so we've got a couple of few minutes left, and this is an opportunity for you to share what you think about where you're in, where you're at, and what period of your life where you want to put your energy, um, and how you're feeling about about life in general. Yeah. Uh... Soon I will be 60, and uh, of course we want also to regenerate. Some dana need to be regenerate with the new blood. Uh, but we need to also learn from the past. So we see the future in our past and develop a institution with the, what they call it, the hetero, mixed within the uh, young and the, the uh, elder generation um, and this become uh, healthy also uh, bring more uh, uh, defable issues and defable uh, staff uh, to and consultant to join become a very inclusive institution men and women also in in, in mix uh, mix uh, staffing environment and also mix uh, uh, few on the, the 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 future. We hope our next generation, uh, who are very active in digital, who are also active in their uh, way in uh, use effectively the digital device. We can also write the digital, not the digital on the AI write us. And that is, I think, what is important. But for my own life, not know yet. It's flow, just easily flow. Uh, as I now uh, before joining the research institute, it's never been also the plan of my life or desire. But it's flow and just use our energy for positively in where we are, and still always see opportunity. Uh, what is opportunity in the future uh, for the better world? Yeah. Okay, we'll wrap this up. It's been a wonderful 40 minutes with Martua. Uh, good luck as you move into your seventh decade, uh, where there's huge opportunities to do what you want to do. Uh, you've got a wonderful family, an incredible wife, great community at Samdana. We're happy that you're a leader and not only a thought leader, but also a, a staff leader within the organization. And, uh, just how much we all admire what you've done over the years. So, uh, thank you for well the done. friendship and family, and also mentoring. You are one of my mentor. Yes, in this. mentoring and, without mentoring. That's yeah, uh, it flows. And it but flows. I learned. Plus. <laughs>